Hello, hello, welcome. And y'all, I really am thrilled to have you all here tonight to learn more about the liver. And I really want to build a community of women that um, want to lower their stress, increase their energy, and us come together to make that happen. So I hope that tonight and um, what I have to share is going to be helpful for you to move forward. Uh, before we dive in again, I'd like you to just introduce yourself so everybody can kind of get to know who everybody is and where you're from. We have Martha from New York. We've got Carolyn from Choctaw. Um, I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma. So uh, yeah, let's let's just share where we're from. And then if you have any specific questions about the liver that you'd like for me to cover tonight or sometime this month, feel free to share those in the Q&A. All right. And then tonight we're going to explore this often overlooked um, aspect of our health, the liver. And I want you to remember that the liver plays a crucial role in our overall well-being and understanding how to support it can make a world of difference in our energy levels and our vitality. So I'm going to show you what I've showed before. If you are not sure if your liver needs help, if your liver is raising its hand and saying, help. Here are just a few of the things that um, could be signs or symptoms that your liver is needing some support. So just let me know in the chat if you um, are if you have one of these or if you have two of these or three of these or even if you have 10 of these, because believe me, you are not alone, right? Several of us have had all of these at some time or another. I know that I have. Um, and I'm currently dealing with only one which is much better than five last month and a couple the week before. So I do have some exciting news closer to the end of this masterclass on how much time it takes for the liver to heal. And you might find that when you start putting some of these in to um, your life, that you see progress in some things like fatigue and gut issues and difficulty losing weight or skin problems or blood sugar imbalance. Some of these things, bad breath, start to disappear. All right. Now, Let's see. Mom says several. Yes, you are not alone, mom. The liver is going to talk to us. She is going to say, hey, give me some help. All right. So in the very first master class that we covered, um, I talked about the liver's role in energy and how a healthy liver contributes to sustained energy levels. I shared why I call the liver mom and energy sources and boosters that your liver needs to be healthy. This is also what we could call lifestyle medicine. So has anybody ever heard the term lifestyle medicine before? If you have, just let me know in the chat or give me a thumbs up, something to let me know that you've heard of lifestyle medicine before. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of life about lifestyle medicine. Lifestyle medicine is an evidence-based approach to preventing, treating, and even reversing diseases by replacing unhealthy behaviors with positive ones, such as eating healthfully. See my bowl of fruit and vegetables there? Being physically active. See my woman walking there? Managing stress. Do you see my sleep there? Avoiding risky substance abuse. Do you see my water there? adequate sleep, and having a strong support system, okay? Um, Tony said that the room kept saying she was in the wrong room, but she's here now. Yay, Tony. I'm glad you found it. We are having a few issues, but hopefully it will get better. <laughs> All right, so, so happy that you're here. Now, here's the thing about lifestyle medicine, okay? It is different from conventional medicine because it allows the body to protect and heal itself by promoting healthful lifestyle choices. It's also about education. If you know me well, I love to educate. It's about guiding and supporting positive behavior changes. And it places a focus on evidence-based optimal nutrition, stress management, sleep, and physical activity. So I say that because I want you to know that lifestyle medicine is actually been proven, okay? It is not like, oh, this is things that we think might be good for us. These are things that have been found. And most of these things have been researched and found that they work better than pharmaceutical medication. All right. It also encourages active participation. So if you were to go and get a pill 
The active participation part of that is going and get the prescription and taking the pill, right? In this case, it's similar as in this is your prescription and your active participation is breath work or getting to bed on time or going for a walk. And it's treating the underlying lifestyle related causes of disease. Y'all, 90% or more of disease is lifestyle related. Okay, meaning that it can be prevented. So if you missed um, the master class where I talked about providing energy and you would like a link to watch it, let me know so that I can make sure um, that you get that link. All right. Now, last week's master class was all about um, healing the uh, liver, the powerful emotional connection, okay, which is another aspect of lifestyle medicine because we are spiritual, emotional, and physical beings, and each part affects the other. So, to have a healthy body, we must have healthy emotional well being. And if we want to have a healthy emotional well being, we need to have a healthy physical body. They both correspond with each other, right? So it's really hard if our physical body is not doing what it needs to do to feel good emotionally and vice versa. Now, today's master class, you're going to learn three ways to rejuvenate your liver. Who wants their liver to look more like the red one with a smile on her face than the purplish one or the yellowish one? I know I do. So here we go. Next week. The last masterclass of the month, we're going to explore the vital role of the drainage funnel in maintaining liver health, okay? And this session is designed to provide you with comprehensive insights into how proper drainage and detoxification can enhance your liver's function and overall well-being. So not only have we spent time this month learning about the liver, we've put what we've lear learned into action. So we've had meditation, we've had breath work, we've had emotional release with essential oils, and um, emotional freedom technique, the tapping. And these are all excellent ways to support the liver so that our liver can heal. And I would love to um, have y'all just, if there is anything that has spoken to you over the last couple of weeks, any experiences you've had that you've done that's helped support your liver, just share it in the chat to let everybody else know um, what you're doing and how your body is responding to it, all right? Because that's what this is about. It's, it's about us sharing what we're doing and how it is helping support us, all right? Now, today's masterclass, like I said, is called Rejuvenate Your Liver, and it's actually based on a training tape by Gary Young called Rejuvenate Your Health, and it was um, in 2004. Now, uh, Renee had asked about the little booklet that used to be around, and that booklet was actually made from this tape. So, Renee, I'm just letting you know that this was um, a training that Gary had done and then a booklet was made that's no longer available, but some of the information is around and I was able to get the transcript from the training tape. And so I'm gonna be sharing some of that today, but I just wanna let you know what I was already working on is actually um, the training from the brochure that was made. So I hope that's helpful for you. Unfortunately, we can't buy those today, um, but it has some good information. So in his training, he says, if you don't have energy, it is very simple. It's because you have energy blocks in your body called toxins, poisons, or nutritional deficiencies. That is what causes energy fatigue, okay? He goes on to say the real basics, cleaning of the human body, when your body is clean, your mind is clean. So tonight, you're going to discover the top three ways to support the liver's health. And you'll notice underneath each one, I have detoxify, I have nourish, and I have revitalize. All right. So let's go to right here. Juva equals liver. All right. So um, whenever we think of rejuvenation, we should think about our liver because the truth is we cannot rejuvenate our health without rejuvenating our liver, okay? Now, our objective tonight is that you'll understand all three of these ways. Number one, detoxify, which is a process that aims to remove toxins from the liver so it can function properly. Now, remember what Gary said? He said everybody's issues are related to either toxins or poisons, okay? So there's number one, 
Or number two, nourish, provide with food or other substances like supplements necessary for growth, health, and good condition. He said the other thing that can prevent energy is uh, nutrient deficiencies, right? If we're not getting the nourishment that our body needs. And number three is revitalize. To restore something to life or give it new life. I love that one. So my goal is that we will connect some dots from the previous liver master classes and healing sessions as we add on new information so that you can rejuvenate your health. If you're ready to rejuvenate your health, raise your hand, give me an okay, tell me yay, like Renee was saying just a minute ago, because she's excited to hear about the rejuvenate program that Gary Young put together. All right. Now let's remember I want you to remember that one mom, the liver has many jobs. What one of the jobs of the liver is detoxification for the rest of the body. Okay. Often we think of detoxify as something that we have to do. All right. But I want you to know it's something that the body is naturally equipped with and it's called a detoxification system. Now it doesn't mean our detoxification system is working optimally but we all have one, okay? And it's important to remember for this system to work, it needs the resources required, all right? So I just showed you this a minute ago, right? Because these are the resources that it requires. All of these sources that provide energy provide your liver with the resources required for detoxification pathways to function optimally. So if your detoxification system isn't working optimally, it's probably because something on here isn't happening and it's not providing it the energy that it needs to work like it needs to. So no energy, no ability for your liver mom to do her job, all right? Now, all of these um, things that are on here, like we're not gonna get deep into the science. I just want you to see that the liver functions like a massive chemical plant, all right, that it manufactures certain compounds, it detoxifies dangerous compounds, and it directs substances all over the body for use or storage or excretion, okay? Your liver makes use of two pathways in order to carry out its detoxification work, phase one and phase two pathways, and I want you to think of phase one as being responsible for breaking things down, okay? So on the left side, it says phase one. These are all the things that are breaking things down. You see like hydration on there, like I just showed a picture of, right? You see nutrients on there. And then it sends those raw materials over to phase two, which builds new substances from the raw material by adding molecules to them. This has a word, it's called conjugation. And then it sends it out through the drainage funnel, which we're going to talk more about next week. But one thing I want you to notice that on both sides of nutrients needed is glutathione, okay? Does anyone remember me sharing about glutathione in liver masterclass number one, All right? And I, there's several different ways of saying it. It's glutathione, glutathione, uh, glutathione, <laughs> right? But um, how I learned it was glutathione. So that's how I'm going to pronounce it. But um, yeah, does anybody remember me talking about that? Let me know in the chat. So right here, I shared that research studies have shown that D-limonene can help the liver produce glutathione, which is needed in both of those pathways, okay? It is a powerful antioxidant and it is a powerful detoxifying agent that plays a crucial role in liver function and overall health. If you do not have glutathione going through your cells, through your body, okay, your liver is not gonna be able to do its job. And as you can see, I have a picture of Ning Shred up at the top and on the right, I have the D-limonene content of four essential oils that happen to be inside of Ning Shred. Okay. And what they have found is that um, this D-limonene and glutathione are going to promote overall cell health and liver health. So if you are looking for a way to love your liver while you are working towards incorporating all of the foundational strategies necessary for a healthy liver, then what I call Ningxia Red is that easy button. Okay. 
Now we're going to talk about some other ways to help support the body to detoxify, but I did want to remind you that that really is pretty much the easy button. All right. Okay. So now we're going to talk more about this cleansing trio next week when we talk about the drainage funnel, but I did want to bring up in the rejuvenate program that Gary Young talked about in his training and um, booklet, the number one product Gary recommends is comfort tone. Okay. So if you want to rejuvenate your health, his number one recommendation was comfort tone. Why comfort tone? Because your liver cannot detoxify if it does not have a way to get the waste out of the body through the colon first. Okay. So if you are stopped up, your liver's like, ah, don't have any place to send it. So I'm going to work on some other jobs that I'm supposed to do before I detoxify. So I want you to think about this as a mom, okay, as a woman. And if the trash is full and you're wanting your husband to take it out, right? Um, or somebody else, a child, somebody else to take out the trash other than you, you're probably not going to like clean your kitchen or your whole house because you don't have room in the trash to put it, right? You're going to wait until somebody takes the trash out. And that is exactly what the liver is doing. It is waiting for the colon to clear out, all right? So the number one mistake I see is women doing is they are trying to do detoxes and not making sure their drainage funnel is working properly. So that is why we are going to talk about more of this next week. And we're gonna talk about the ICP and the essential sign. But first I want you to know, Okay. And if you're like, oh, I know that my detoxification system isn't working very well, please, before starting any type of detox program, make sure that your bowels are moving. And when I say bowels are moving, preferably three times a day, if you are eating three times a day, if you're eating twice a day, two times, if you're eating once a day, one time's fine. But if you're eating three times a day, we really need to be moving our bowels three times a day. If you're only going once, then you're going to want to go very slow with any extra detox, supporting it by taking anything that's going to help move things um, through the liver, because then it's going to get backed up between the liver and the colon, which is called the gallbladder. All right. If you don't have a gallbladder, then you definitely want to make sure that your bowels are moving before you're trying to detox anything from your liver. If you are not going at least once daily, then you're going to want to do something like comfort tone, the one that Gary recommended and works for many. But I do want you to know that everyone is different. So remember, if a product does not work for you, there may be another product out there that will work. So I don't want you to give up. But I also want you to remember that for our body to work, it has to poop. All right. It needs energy. So don't forget to provide it with energy. Now, something that else that's really important to talk about is emotional detox. And I have that on the other side. So we've got pooping and emotional detox or what I usually call emotional release. And your liver's ability to optimally go through phase one and phase two can be hindered from emotional baggage stored in the liver, okay? It's toxic. This is why I believe that any good liver detox program will include ways to support you through emotional release. This is why I have incorporated our Monday Healing Modality Sessions is because I wanna make sure that you are helping yourself release some of these things that we hold on to. So who knew that they were detoxing their liver when they were releasing toxic emotions with the liver meditation, breathing techniques, because when we exhale, toxins are out, emotional release with essential oils and EFT tapping. Okay, that's what you were doing. Now we're going to talk about... Um, Second, things are popping up. Mom just asked, would digest and cleanse be a good one too? Yes, it has its own things and it's not the one that Gary recommended for the liver, um, but there's lots of good ways that we can help support um, if we're not moving the poop and that would be another one too. So yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this next one. So let's say that you're ready to step up supporting your liver detox pathways. Dandelion root is one of the most common herbs used for liver detoxification 
because it helps to stimulate bile flow. So we want to start stimulating bile flow before we start getting too much action going on in the liver. So again, that it can move through to the intestines and through the colon and out. All right. Now there is dandelion leaf and there is dandelion root. Dandelion leaf has a mild effect on the liver, but more of a kidney tonic and diuretic. So make sure that you look for dandelion root if your intention is to detoxify your liver. So here's the thing. I highly recommend you start with something like a simple cup of dandelion tea before you start on supplements for detoxification. See how your body does, how your liver does. Make sure that your colon is moving. Okay. Now I'm also going to share that my beliefs may not be your beliefs. And honestly, my beliefs today are not what they were 10 years ago. The more I learn, the more I know, and the more I know, the more I realize how complicated the body is and how much we don't know. And when I say we, I don't just mean me and you, I'm talking people in the science world, right? There's some things that we just don't understand yet about how the body works. So supplements can help us in so many ways and detoxify is one of them. But if we are taking supplements without really understanding what is in them, or why we're using them and how long we should use them, we may not get the results we want. So I want you to think about what are the results you want, all right? For me, I want a healthy liver. I want a healthy body so that I can have the health to do the things I love with those I love. That's my goal, right? And then I have to know that my body may not be ready for some detoxifying supplements. So as I go through these, I want you to think about your goal, what it is you want to accomplish. And then I want you to pay attention to if your body is ready or not. Okay. And that is why my focus is always start with the foundations, like providing the body with energy. All of those are a great place to start. Okay. But if you're like, Shauna, I'm ready for the next step. Then I'm going to ask you, have you tried dandelion root tea? Okay. Simple way to start helping the liver detoxify. Now, I also really like the Zyto Insight Scan. So not only can I see what my body resonates with, but how high, all right? So I have a picture of K and B on here, which stands for kidney and bladder. Um, and it comes up, let's say on my Zyto Insight Scan as a 76 out of 100. In my mind, that's kind of like a C, right? And it is supportive for the liver. And um, maybe it's something else like dandelion tea and um, would be better right now. Okay, because if it was like a 98 out of 100, I know that my body's saying K and B, K and B. But if it's 76, it might be saying that might be good, but not quite yet. All right. And so I want you to think about that because here's the thing. If you were to do a Zyto Insight scan and K and B came up as a 98, I'm going to say, go for it, girl. Your body is ready. And it's saying this would be an awesome tincture to try. Okay. So personally, I have found using bioenergetic scans and muscle testing to be a good way to decide what my body needs or working with a holistic health practitioner to help me figure things out. All right. Now let's talk about K and B because its main ingredient is guess what? Dandelion root. And it also has some wonderful herbs like juniper berry, parsley, royal jelly, and much more. And I want you to know it's considered a tincture or a bitter, all right? So when we were in Italy, uh, me and my family went to Italy in December, I learned more about the importance of bitters and how they can support digestion because most restaurants actually bring you a shot glass with their bitter at the end of the meal. And so if I'm gonna be drinking this stuff, I was curious why. So I did a little research while I was in Italy. And it may sound weird to have an alcohol-based drink to help support the liver, but alcohol can bring out certain constituents um, from plants that steam distillation cannot. And many of these are very helpful for the detoxification pathways because they start getting the bile to move. Okay. So if your body is ready to use something like KMB, it is good to add three half dropperfuls into some distilled water and drink that three times a day. My recommendation would be much like the Italians to make a little shot glass of it and use it after your meal to help stimulate the detoxification pathways. All right. Now, the next supplement I would like to talk about is Juvitone. And that word Juva again stands for liver. So anytime that we see Juva on a Young Living product, we know that it stands for liver support. 
Now, Juvitone is called an advanced phytonutrient supplement that promotes healthy liver function through a powerful herbal complex and a blend of potent premium essential oils. Now, Juvitone is an excellent source of choline and contains DL-methanine, which helps with normal excretion functions and helps recycle glutathione, a natural antioxidant that's crucial for normal liver function. It also contains Oregon grape root, which provides the liver supporting compound berberine. Some of y'all might've heard of that before to help with sugar balance, okay? Has lemon in, lemon in it, it has German chamomile, rosemary, and more premium essential oils for a well-rounded liver health supplement. Now, I want you to look because on there it says, this is considered an advanced product. Now, in the past, I didn't think much about it, but ever since I have really learned more about minerals and vitamins, and I even have a book here from a pharmacist um, called Supplement Field Guide, a Clinical Pharmacist Guide to Young Living Supplements. Eh, I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, the more I learn, the more I realize that, you know, what is on the packaging is there to help support us figure out how to best use it, okay? And again, when I started learning more about minerals and vitamins, there's a few things about Juvitone that I believe makes it perfect for some and not so perfect for others, okay? And I want to share that with you tonight because the first three ingredients are calcium, copper, and sodium, as well as a wonderful host of other ingredients like beetroot, okay? But each of us are different and what we need is going to be different too. And I think that's really important for us to remember. So I personally do not feel comfortable telling everyone detoxify your liver with Juvitone. And here is why, okay? This here is a picture of what's called an HTMA, a hair tissue mineral analysis. And along with some blood lab training that I've been going through, I have also been trained in HTMA. And the reason I chose to do this training was after I taught about minerals back in February and I was writing a mineral ebook that I thought would be simple enough because everybody shares about how wonderful minerals are and how we need them because we do. Um, so I just thought, I'm just gonna tell everyone what minerals they need to take and which ones because minerals are so important for the health of the cell. And all of that is true. But what I found out is that not everyone needs the same minerals and too much of some minerals can cause a problem. And one of them is calcium. All right. And you might be going, what? Don't we all need calcium? Don't we need calcium for our bones? Don't we need calcium for our teeth? Yes, we do. But calcium is also what causes calcifications in our vessels that cause heart disease. And heart disease is the number one cause of death. And it can cause calcifications on bones, bone spurs, in muscles, and other soft tissues causing damage. So right here, we see that this person's calcium is high. You'll see this box goes all the way to the top. Anything over 200 is off the chart. So my question is, do you think taking more calcium would be beneficial for this person? Probably not, right? This person has low sodium and low potassium and some other things going on that we can't see on this graph, but this advanced product would not be right for this person right now, okay? Now, would it be right at some point? Yes, if they can make some changes to get things in balance, okay? So I share this because my goal is to help support women to have less stress and more energy and not more stress and less energy. And a product like Juvitone for this person could do just that. High calcium is a sign of stress and more calcium could likely cause more stress to the body, especially when taken in supplement form. So does this make Juvitone a bad product? No, because I'm gonna show you somebody else, okay? Juvitone may be perfect for this person who has low calcium, low copper, and low sodium, all ingredients inside of the advanced liver product. Now, I know I've shared a lot of information. You'd be like, Shauna, what are you saying here? Like, how do I know if Juvitone's good for me and not good for me? And, and if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A, and I'm happy to answer them at the end. But I do want to let you know that HTMA is something that I'm looking at as doing a service um, for my clients because I have not felt comfortable 
recommending certain supplements like Juvitone if I don't have some, um, some testing to really back up those answers. Okay. And so, um, again, if you would like to support your liver in a simple and gentle way, I'm going to highly recommend tea. Okay. Um, and as I said, dandelion root tea would be a great place to start. And then there's four more teas that I'm going to share with, and then I'm going to share another supplement. Okay. So peppermint tea, this could be made by buying peppermint tea or adding peppermint essential oil to your tea or water. Peppermint encourages your liver and gallbladder to release bile. Do y'all keep hearing bile? We're going to talk more about bile next week when we're talking about the drainage pathways. Um, and this is going to improve detoxification and it's going to improve digestion. So if you've ever eaten a heavy or fatty meal and you're feeling overstuffed or bloated, peppermint tea can come to the rescue. All right. And then surprisingly, chamomile tea also helps your liver detoxify. Chamomile is also known to calm your nervous system, which in turn regulates your vagus nerve and your vagus nerve helps improve digestion, helps with bile flow, helps with heart rhythm and many other functions in your body. So when you're more relaxed, your body gets into a resting and digesting state, a state where your liver begins to release more bile and then it's able to detoxify because it's able to do its job. And inflammation is one of the biggest causes of liver stagnation. And chamomile tea is also anti-inflammatory and can help slow down the damaging effects of chronic inflammation on your liver. So this is a great one to have at night as you're winding it down because it's also been shown to help with sleep, all right? And then there's ginger and lemon tea, and it's often cons considered a natural detoxifier that can help with liver health. Lemons contain citric acid, which can help support liver function. Ginger also has bioactive compounds that can stimulate circulation and help eliminate toxins. Some say that drinking lemon ginger tea on an empty stomach can help detoxify the body by removing toxins, all right? And then there's chai tea, cardamom and fennel. Cardamom has liver protective and detoxifying properties. So um, I probably am not saying it the right way, but it says cardamom. And that's how I remember it's from my liver, mom, okay? Cardamom is also a diuretic and helps to detoxify your body through your kidneys. Fennel also has detoxifying and diuretic properties. The combination of these two spices creates a lovely aromatic detox tea. You can also add turmeric and black pepper to this mix to increase its detoxification and antioxidant properties. So my question is who is going to start drinking one of these teas, either hot or cold this month? Let me know in the chat. So Martha says she loves chai tea. Uh, me too. Okay, I am um, for months now have been enjoying all of these teas, but my favorite being a tea called sweet and spicy. So Martha, if you love chai tea, you would probably love my sweet and spicy tea that I get from Gird Earth because it is a strong chai tea. And then um, I can add other fun things to help it make a hydration drink. So I even add protein, which my son now calls my Pro tea, okay? And I'll be sharing more in the future how tea can be a wonderful way to stay hydrated and help support your overall health. I am not talking about the good old sweet Lipton tea, y'all. I'm talking about teas that are made with our essential oils or made from herbs in a way that's gonna be supportive to the body, all right? So um, Martha, where is that again? Where is what again? Can you go into a little bit more detail for me? And then um, golden turmeric. The chai tea, um, the one that I like is called Sweet and Spicy and the brand is Good Earth. If you're asking about my pro tea recipe, I think that was inside Facebook, but um, I'll be sharing more in the next month on that. All right, so let's talk about this turmeric, all right? It's an excellent antioxidant and also helps stimulate bile flow. So because your liver works hard to remove toxins from your body, it goes through a lot of oxidative stress. And oxidative stress means your cells are being damaged by toxins and free radicals. Therefore, including herbs like turmeric and ginger, which are high in antioxidants, will help protect your liver. Turmeric, ginger, and lime also help to stimulate more bile flow, which is important for digestion and detoxification. So this golden turmeric would be another great way to support your liver. 
Has anybody tried this? If you have, let me know in the chat. I really like it. Um, I just have to be really careful for the powder because it kind of goes everywhere. So it's like you put some water in and then you put it in and try and get the water in so it doesn't all um, going everywhere. And Martha says she is drinking it now. So um, one thing I want y'all to hear when I'm talking about all these teas and stuff, if you have a hard time drinking water, right? This is another way to add to your water so that you're drinking more, getting hydrated, and they're also full of minerals, which can be very supportive for the body, okay? So I'm giving you some helpful tips, tips on how you can help your liver hydrate and um, really be detoxifying at a very gentle way to support your body. All right, so let's discuss some wonderful essential oils that can help support the liver detoxification pathways. The essential oils in Juva Cleanse and Juva Cleanse Vitality are Helioprism, Celery Seed, and Ledum, just three, all right? And they've long been known for their cleansing and overall wellness properties. So a 2003 study conducted by Roger Lewis, MD at Young Life Research Clinic in Springville, Utah, evaluated the efficacy of the essential oils in the Juva Cleanse blend in treating cases of advanced hepatitis C. In one case, a male age 20 was diagnosed with a viral count of 13,200 of hepatitis C. And after taking two capsules of Juva Cleanse per day for a month with no other intervention, his viral count dropped to 2,480 with an 80% reduction. All right. That's pretty amazing by using this Juva Cleanse. Heliochrysum, that's in it, has been proven to be an effective liver support by stimulating liver function and production and regeneration of new blood cells, as well as flush plaque and chemicals from the liver. Celery seed can help as a liver cleanser on its own or when combined with other essential oils like in the Juva Cleanse blend. So funny story here. I had a Zyto scan once that had celery seed on it. And when I read about it, I thought, oh, this would be great. I'll put it in a capsule. Um, so I did. And y'all, it made me so tired that I fell asleep at the kitchen table during lunch. Like I was homeschooling the kids. I'd made us lunch. I was so tired. I, I feel like I probably looked like a toddler, you know, in their little high chair that could not stay awake. And I still don't know to this day why it made me fall asleep. But after that, I always used it at night. Um, but I would will always like to share that, um, you know, when someone uses Juva Cleanse, I'm like, hey, I just want you to know celery seeds in it. So you might want to use it at night, which again, nighttime is when our liver is doing its biggest detox job. So that's a perfect time to use it. All right. Now, I don't have a problem I'm using Juva Cleanse topically making me sleepy, but with the celery seed, it did make me sleepy when I took it in. So I'm just saying if you take it internally, you might want to do it at night. All right. Ledum originated in Eastern Canada, and it was used locally in a tea called Labrador tea and has been found to increase bile flow and help with fatty liver. So Juva Cleanse and Juva Cleanse Vitality are the same essential oil blend. One is for topical use, the other is for internal use, but the oil in the bottle is the same. So you can apply Juva Cleanse over the liver in the kidney areas or on the bottom of the feet, or you can use it as a supplement with olive oil in a capsule twice a day is recommended, okay? And I want you to know that Juva Cleanse was put together to help cleanse the liver from viruses like we just heard about hepatitis C and with heavy metals, okay? Now, Monday, I'm gonna be sharing about coffee enemas and what I may add to my coffee enema to support my liver even more. So I'll be sharing more about that on Monday. Next is Juva Flex, which again is to support the liver and the lymphatic system, okay? And it's also to help break addictions. And we must remember most addictions play a role in our liver health. So this can help in many ways, okay? It has blue tansy, fennel, geranium, heliochrysum again, Roman chamomile, and rosemary essential oils. Several of the oils are the ones I previously stated were found to be great as teas for liver detoxification. So you could make your own tea with this blend, or you could add it to your favorite tea or use it on its own topically over the liver or again in a capsule if you don't like the taste of it. Now, blue tansy has been shown to help regenerate liver cells and assist in detoxifying the body. 
Fennel has a tonic effect on the liver, meaning making it stronger. And geranium essential oil helps the liver by expanding the liver's bile ducts, which helps with detox because if it's all clogged up, it's hard for it to move. And then rosemary helps flush out toxins from the liver. Again, any of those oils inside of these products could be used on their own to support the liver detoxification pathways. Much like teas, I find these essential oils and blends a simple way to support the liver daily. All right. Oh, I know that's a lot of information, right? Hope y'all are taking notes. So now we're going to move on to number two, nourish. To provide with food or other substances like supplements necessary for growth, health, and good condition. So if we want our liver mom to be healthy, we must nourish her. And one of the most simple ways to do that is to start with a glass of pure water with lemon juice and or lemon vitality oil. All right. So I'm also going to be sharing 16 foods. So we have 16 foods up here that are great for liver health. So Renee is asking a question, would cleansing the liver be beneficial for people that are strong, struggling with long haul COVID? Never thought of that, but if things can hang up in the liver, it makes sense. Yes, the answer is yes. However, here's the little piece. A lot of people that are dealing with long haul COVID, and I have been on a couple of summits listening um, to some different um, practitioners, is that a lot of people with long haul COVID were already deficient. We're talking about that right now, nutrient deficient before they got COVID. And then their body's not able, their liver is not able to do what it needs to do. So it may not have what it needs to detoxify right now. So I want you to listen to the nourishment part because we must nourish our liver so that it can do its job as detoxifying. If we go straight to detoxifying, they're probably not going to feel much better. Okay. If anything, they might feel worse because they're going to be getting rid of stuff, but their body's not going to be able to handle it. Okay. So we're going to talk about 16 best foods for liver health. If you are not sure where to start, okay. You're like, oh, these things on here. Where do I start? Anything green is going to be a healthy choice. Then moving into anything citrus, berries, carrots, and pastured eggs. Okay. And the reason why is all of those are great ways to boost phase one liver detox. So we want to first break down the stuff in there. All right. And those are the things that can break it down. And then getting the other foods will help support phase two and phase one. All right. All of these are great. All of these are great to help support the liver. Okay. So I'm going to go right here. Now, I know it can seem um, a little difficult to get all the nutrients from the list that I just showed, right? So that is when we have something like Ningxia Red that can help support us. And the number two product Gary shares in the Rejuvenate program, hear me, Renee, this is number two, right? Juva Power. So Juva Power helps to cleanse the colon. Remember how I said that's really, really important. That's why we're going to get the comfort tone so we can start moving things out. And then also Juva Power is going to help cleanse the colon and it's going to help cleanse the liver with a whole food vegetable powder complex that's also a rich source of acid binding foods. So unlike Juva Tone, all right, that has some things in it that I'm like, you might wait on. It's an advanced product, right? Juva Power is also advanced, but it is using food, all right? And I want you to understand there really is a difference on how that works in our body, all right? So this has um, a rich source of acid binding foods. What does that mean? Well, a lot of times when we're trying to detox, um, our acid goes up and this is going to claim that acid to help get it out of the body. And that's what we want it to do. So it has rice bran, it has spinach powder, tomato flakes, beetroot powder, flaxseed, oat bran, broccoli floret powder, cucumber powder, dill seed, barley sprout powder, ginger root powder, slippery elm, taurine, psyllium, seed husk, any seed, fennel seed, aloe vera, and peppermint. If you were to look up all those individually, they all have been shown to help support the liver. So how do I use it? I have found that sprinkling a tablespoon on food, um, like baked potatoes, is really tasty, okay? And it can be put in smoothies. So those are the two ways that I've personally done it. There's other ways you could do it. Um, but we must remember that if we do not nourish our liver, then she cannot do number one detoxify. 
even if you're doing all the essential oils, even if you're doing all the supplements, if it's not nourished, it's not going to be able to do its job. Okay. So now we didn't talk about um, phase three of detoxification, but after one and two, there is a three. Okay. And it takes those conjugated toxins from phase two and it shuttles them out and it uses enzymes. And it uses enzymes that are formed from the nutrients that I just shared from the Juba Power and from the nutrient list, the 16 different foods, okay? So those have enzymes in them that helps move those toxins from phase one, from phase that moves to phase two, from phase two that moves to phase three, okay? Now, remember when I said detoxification is the number one job for the liver, but it can't do it without the resources? Again, if you start heavily trying to detoxify but aren't nourishing your liver, then it's not going to have the enzymes that are formed from those nutrients. So that's why Gary's third product recommendation in the Rejuvenate program was detoxine. These enzymes are meant to help in phase three detoxification and to help the liver do its job. Okay. And his recommendation was no less than three in the morning and three at night. Okay, so now we're at number three, revitalize, to restore something to life or give it new life. The liver, I want y'all to hear me here, the liver is the only solid organ in the body that Western medicine says can fully regenerate and the time it takes to do so depends on the type of damage, okay? So what Western medicine, traditional medicine says after surgery, if a portion of the liver is removed, the remaining portion can regrow to its original volume in about a year with liver function returning to normal in two to four weeks, okay? Now, I wanna say something about this other than that it is super, super amazing to think that we can cut off part of the liver and it will regrow. Amazing, right? We also have to remember that it says that the liver can function normally in two to four weeks. That doesn't mean it's great. It's gonna take a year for all of it to grow back, but in two to four weeks. A lot of times if we go to Western medicine and they're doing blood tests and stuff on us, they're like, oh, your liver is fine. 80% of your liver cannot be working properly and those tests are going to be good, okay? They're going to be normal. That's how wonderful our liver is. She will work her tail end off with only 20%, okay? So I want you to think about that because sometimes we can have liver symptoms of a sluggish liver, fatty liver, or some of these other things that could be wrong with our liver, yet it not show up on blood work, okay? Now, let's talk about how this happens. The liver cells divide and regrow the lost tissue within days. And the growing liver can double its original size again within four to six weeks, okay? So if it was this big, it can be this big in just four to six weeks in a month. So when someone asks, how long does it take to make changes with the liver? If it can grow new liver cells and double its size in four to six weeks, just imagine what it is capable of doing if you haven't even cut any of it off, all right? Now, after injury, liver cells can regenerate within one to two weeks of injury. So about half the time, if you haven't cut it off and it's just having to regenerate, okay? And the liver can completely repair itself within 30 days if no complications arise. So how long does it take to make some changes in your liver to change? It may not take that long. However, Complications can occur if regeneration is incomplete or prevented by continued damage from factors like viruses, drugs, and alcohol. So let's talk about after alcohol use. Prolonged alcohol use can cause severe damage to the liver and partial healing begins a few weeks after you quit drinking. The timeline of your liver detoxing depends on a variety of factors, including the amount of alcohol you consume, the frequency of your drinking and other health conditions you may have. For moderate drinkers, the liver can simply detox from alcohol within a few days to a week, but for heavy drinkers or those with liver conditions, it can take much longer, sometimes several weeks or even months. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, 
the liver can heal within six months with lifestyle changes, weight loss, and a healthy diet. That means you can reverse within six months a non-alcoholic fatty acid. This is all coming from Western medicine, which is pretty amazing, okay? Because they rarely have good news about reversing anything. They're gonna say you're just stuck with it or you're gonna have to have surgery, right? But they do say you can regenerate your liver. So I think that's the most amazing news I can share with you tonight. But I do have more, <laughs> right? So right here, we need to remember that I said with lifestyle changes, so whatever has caused your liver to be sluggish or to have fatty liver, change must occur for healing to occur. So as I said, the liver must be able to detoxify, it must be nourished, and we must allow it to revitalize or regenerate. So how do we help it to revitalize? Anyone have any thoughts? I want you to let me know while I get a drink here. What do you think might help that liver revitalize? Anybody? Mom, this will be recorded so you will be able to go back and watch it again. Martha says to nourish and detoxify. Janet says to exercise. Those are all good answers. But we want to think about what do we need to revitalize our liver? Tony says all the things we use in energy class, all the things in energy class are going to support the liver. Correct. But there's one thing outside of detoxifying, outside of nourishing, that's going to help revitalize the liver. Mom says water. Martha says consistency. Both of those are good. The water is going to help move things through the body to get rid of um, toxins, which is helping with detoxifying. Martha, anything that we're doing consistently is going to help support it. Yes, but I haven't heard the one thing yet. And then my mom says it, sleep. That is it. Fat burning and rejuvenation. At night, the body draws on its fat reserves for energy and repair, okay? Yes, we burn more fat when we are tucked up in bed fast asleep. At night, we produce two of the most important anti-aging and rejuvenating hormones, melatonin and DHEA. Melatonin is produced by the pineal gland and helps us to sleep and controls our sleep-wake cycle. And then DHEA is produced by the adrenal glands and it helps to regenerate and repair the tissues. So if you're not getting your best sleep between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. when the liver does its detoxing and regenerating, then this may be your lifestyle change that needs to happen. Okay. Now, remember, detoxing is its number one job. It has other jobs. But if it's not detoxing, it's not regenerating. Okay. It has to be able to detox before it can regenerate. So I'm gonna give you a help, few helpful tips. Sleep in a darkened room and avoid blue light at night. Resist the temptation to look at your laptop, smartphone, or tablet at least two hours before bedtime. Don't watch TV in bed, unplug, switch off while you sleep, okay? Melatonin production kicks in around 10 p.m. if we are ready for bed and in a darkened room. If we're not, then melatonin is going to take longer and it's going to take longer for it to be activated. Eating a light supper and avoiding snacking before bed, which can cause blood sugar to drop during the night, disturbing a restful night's sleep. Okay, so there's some helpful ten tips. Okay, now... If you make these lifestyle changes and still need support, I highly recommend the Rest and Renew Reset Kit. Now, here's the thing. This kit may not be for everyone, but it may be for you. So I want you to listen, okay? Let's start with Ningxia Red, okay? It can help your liver detoxify because of the D-limonene that helps support glutathione production. And Ningxia Red has been clinically shown to improve sleep patterns and increase time of sleep by an average, ready for this, of 21 minutes. 
following 60 days of continued use. So Ning Charette has been shown to improve sleep. Now let's look at the second supplement, which is the super magnesium. Now, most everyone needs more magnesium. If you are stressed, your body uses more. However, if you are using magnesium and do not get the results you are looking for in 30 days, then there is a high chance that the magnesium is not getting into your cells. And this is when an HTMA, hair tissue mineral analysis, may give you more information on what's going on at the cellular level so that you can make adjustments in your cells, get the magnesium they need. Now, as I shared earlier, I was working on a mineral ebook earlier this year, and the more I wanted to recommend specific minerals, the more I learned that not everyone will benefit from single minerals, okay? So my ebook really turned into super magnesium because I began to think that was the only mineral that was safe to recommend to everyone. And this is the little guy, this little super magnesium. And I thought it was really funny when Young Living came out just last month with super magnesium, Okay. Now, what I do want to share is unlike calcium, any extra magnesium is not going to hurt you, but some people do have opposite reactions if the magnesium is not going into the cell. So I want to talk about that for just a minute. So a few things I've learned is that if you take magnesium and you feel more anxious than relaxed, that is a sign that the magnesium is not getting into the cell. Okay. It's not because the magnesium is bad. It's because it's not getting into the cell and it's causing the magnesium to build up, which is causing the anxiety because it's not doing what it needs to do, okay? Um, so then stop taking it, right? It's not helpful right now, but it is a sign that things are out of balance and that you need to get things into balance. Next, if you take magnesium and you have a harder time sleeping, you're like, everybody says that if you take magnesium, you sleep better, but I sleep worse. Good sign that magnesium is not going into the cell. So stop taking it, okay? Again, this could be a sign that um, this is not for you right now. We need it to be for you because magnesium plays a huge role in health. We need it to go into the cell, okay? And last but not least, if you have muscle cramps or constipation while you're on something like super magnesium, that is a sign that the magnesium is not getting into the cell. So again, magnesium is super important to our health, but we want the magnesium to get into cells if there is a mineral imbalance preventing that from occurring, we want to know so that adjustments can be made and the body can do what it was created to do, which is take magnesium and calcium into the cell and not to be stored outside of it. So for some, just adding Ning Shred could help your sleep or adding Ning Shred and the super magnesium could be what you need. And for some of you, you might need a little bit more. And that's where deep night essence comes in, okay? Now this supplement does not have melatonin, but it does help your body to relax and get a good night's sleep because of the products that are inside of it. So it has spearmint and spearmint has been shown to be a sedative to the body. It has green tea, which has been shown to increase melatonin production. So instead of them putting melatonin in here, it has green tea that helps your body produce melatonin. Holy basil has been shown to help the body cope with stress, which often affects sleep. A lot of times people can't go to sleep at night because their body is in a stressed state. Lemon balm has been shown in studies with people dealing with insomnia to have a 42% reduction in symptoms after 15 days of using lemon balm tea. Well, I want to share for just a moment. My daughter has had issues with sleep over the last few years, and she had seen on TikTok people using lemon balm tea for sleep and other things. So she started using it. Okay. Um, and it was helping. And then we went to the Young Living Convention. She did not take it with her. And she was staying up way past 11 p.m. And her sleep wake cycle got totally messed up. Okay. And after about a week of being home and trying several things that weren't helping her sleep, and wake up feeling rested. So some things would put her to sleep, but she'd be tired and sleeping till noon. Um, she tried this deep night essence. And the first time she got a great night of sleep and woke up rested and has been using it ever since. So she is praising this neat, deep night essence, all right? And she is someone who typically does not respond well to supplements, magnesium being one of them, okay? So there are some people that have said they've had the opposite effect. Again, not all supplements are for everyone. And, and the last ingredient that is in it is lavender, and it's been helped, shown to help with sleep topically through inhalation and internally. And in this case, you'd be taking it internally. So again, this might be something that will help support you to get more sleep. 
But what I want to reiterate is for the liver to regenerate, you must get good deep sleep, all right? And then the other thing is that 80 to 100 million Americans have fatty liver disease. This makes it one of the most common causes of liver disease in the United States, and it is something that can easily be prevented with lifestyle medicine and easily reversed with lifestyle medicine. This research paper here in the World Journal of Hepatology, which is a study of the liver, is all about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and sleep disorders. So you're going to see in the highlighted below, it says core tip, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is independently associated with sleep disorders. Different sleep disorders may be the cause of the onset and aggravation of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. An excessive or insufficient sleep duration, poor sleep quality, insomnia, sleep-wake disorders, particularly obstructive sleep apnea, may increase the incidence of NAFLD and contribute to its development and worsening. Further research is needed to establish a clear relationship between NAFLD and sleep disorders, which can help identify potential patients earlier and facilitate effective prevention and treatment measures. What does this mean? As usual, the chicken and egg, which comes first? Does sleep disorders cause fatty liver disease or does fatty liver disease cause sleep disorders? Either way, we have the word in there, fatty liver disease. What does the body do during sleep? It burns fat, okay? And it helps regenerate. So helping your body get the best sleep possible is going to help your liver regenerate and detoxify and nourishing your liver is going to help you get better sleep. All right. So in my book, Bye Bye Normal, Hello Exceptional, I share about the liver. And you can see the list of how to know if you have fatty or sluggish liver up on top. I also share in my book, four years I dealt with a sluggish liver based on my symptoms and never knew it. I would complain of feeling nauseated in the mornings, issues with weight gain, skin issues like acne, and hormonal imbalances. I did not understand the toxins I was putting in my body and on my body were causing my mom inside to be worn out and tired, which made me as a mom feel the same way, overwhelmed and done. What I've learned through the past 10 years is supporting my liver daily is true self-care for my internal mom because less stress on my body Less anger, less pain, and more energy gives me more time to be the mom I was created to be. Here's some good news. Your liver can regenerate with as little as 25% of the original liver mass to its full size. You can renew your liver with the right choices, self-care. When you love your liver, your mom is no longer tired and sluggish. All right? So that's what I share in my book. Which brings me to this coming Monday's healing modality session, coffee enemas. Now you may be thinking, Shauna, why? Why? Why are we going to talk about this? When I was writing my book, which y'all, it took me 10 years, okay? I wrote down the top four ways I had learned to love your liver. Number one, walking, okay? Number two, decreasing toxic load. Number three, drinking filtered water with lemon juice or lemon oil. And number four, Coffee enemas are one of the fastest and most economical ways to detoxify your liver. Now, I personally had no problem doing one, two, and three, and I did them regularly, and I still had symptoms. So I knew for years that a coffee enema could be beneficial, but I, like many, didn't know if that was really what I wanted to do, because I don't even drink coffee, <laughs> okay? But I personally never recommend something I am not willing to do and try. So before my book went to print, December 8th, 2020, I decided to do my first coffee enema because my book was going to be published January 21st, 2021. And I didn't want to take it out of my book. And I didn't want to keep it in there if I wasn't willing to do it. And y'all, that was almost four years ago. And today I still do them regularly, like sometimes almost daily. And when I don't, I have more symptoms. So I don't know if I'm a, like a coffee enema expert, but I definitely feel like I have enough practice to share with you on Monday why you too may want to add coffee enemas to help detoxify your liver. Because I want to let y'all know we live in a very toxic world. 
And Gary Young wrote back in 2004, that was 20 years ago, when we had less toxins than we do today, that one of the most important things we can do is clean within. And how can we do that? We can do something like a rejuvenate, rejuvenate your health program. All right. So if anybody has any questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and take time to answer your questions. Okay.